down on the TRE floor here at Garmin with Harry Hayde and talking latest and greatest Garmin products and we're at the running event, so for runners specifically, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. Kind of our bread and butter. Um, so we have a display here which shows our latest and greatest products. Uh, we've got uh, the Forerunner line, uh, the Phoenix and Epix line, and also the Vivo Active 5, which was newly announced back in September. And so I'd be happy to kind of walk you through um, all three of those little categories and yeah, just show I'd you how. Yeah, I'd love to understand kind of why, why would I look at each of these lines. Right, right. So uh, I always like to ask the, the person, like, what, is, what are you doing with the watch? What do you need it to do? Um, and so that's usually a good pivot point. To, are you someone that's looking for, you know, your basic wellness tracking? Are you more of a dedicated runner? Like, do you really identify with being a runner? And that's where the Forerunner line really shines. Uh, or do you feel like maybe you're more adventurous and go into the mountains, do a lot more hiking, skiing, backcountry stuff? That's where our Phoenix and Epix lines really shine uh, with the built-in topographical maps and everything like that. It's super robust as a product. Um, and so, yeah, so that's where they really shine. So for the wellness customer, um, the Vivo Active range, we just, uh, we just newly announced, like I said, in September. So it's going to cover all of your basic, you know, running, things like that. It can do a lot of activities. Uh, but it really shines in the uh, the recovery side. So it's going to be uh, really good for your sleep score, your, uh, the, your recovery timer, and really giving you guidance on what you're doing. Is it helping your fitness? Is it hurting it? And so it's a good little you know tool to help you kind of get through the day uh, as a good product. It also has good tight integration with your phone, and we are platform agnostic, so we work well with iPhone and Android. So as long as you have your phone with you, you're going to see those texts come through. You're gonna see those calls pop up, uh, and you can even see images now when they come through on text message for Android only at this time, which is pretty cool. With the Forerunner line, so like I said, our bread and butter, um, we've got a kind of a good, better, best story is what we try to tell. So starting at the bottom, we've got the Forerunner 55. So this is kind of your get it done watch. It's got good heart rate, good GPS, start, stop. It's gonna be the product for someone that really wants something that's no fuss, no thrills. They just wanna watch this kind of track, track the runs and give them basic metrics. Uh, as you step up through the line into the 2 Series, you're going to get a couple of things. Much more accurate GPS, so it's got multi-band GPS, so super accurate. Everyone's always, it's kind of a buzzword now, everyone's got multi-band, but it's really in how you design the antenna and how accurate that GPS actually can be. So various platforms online can show you, you know, which ones are more accurate, which are not, but I firmly believe in the camp that we are you know, at, the, at the top there. Um, you're also going to get triathlon support, so multi-sport, you'll be able to do you know, swim, bike, run, everything like that. Um, and then a lot more of the performance features like uh, your training readiness, which is going to show you a score from 0 to 100. Looks at four different factors, so your sleep score, your recovery time, your training load, and your HRV status. And basically tells you, you know, how ready are you to take on today? Uh, are you ready to do a hard workout? Should you maybe dial it back or change your training to make sure that you're you know, training correctly? Are you maybe need to dial it back in case you might get injured and stuff like that? So it's been a really popular feature. So that is something you're going to get in the 265. And then moving all the way up to the 965, which is our top of the line triathlon slash running watch. It's got a titanium bezel. It's got fully built in topographical maps, uh, which are routable because it's a real maps in the watch. Super cool. Uh, you can build your own courses on the device. So if you're somewhere that you're not familiar with, you can make a round trip and say, hey, I want to do 10 miles in any direction and it'll route you on the course it's created on the watch. Um, these also all have music built in, so you can work with your third party of choice, so Spotify, Deezer, Amazon, uh, and you can you know, sideload the music so you don't have to run with the phone, uh, which I know a lot of people do, but I personally never run with the phone. I, I hate it bouncing around, so I, I just, I, I love having Spotify on my wrist. I can listen to podcasts, uh, super handy. And then uh, moving up, if, like, like I was mentioning before, if you're more of that backcountry outdoor adventure then the Phoenix and the Epix and Enduro are probably the products you're going to want to look at. They have a really robust build quality, so titanium on the front and the back plate, sapphire display, built-in maps, you've got touchscreen, you've got all of the, the ski activities, so you can do backcountry skiing, it's got resorts in there, it's got golf. It's like, the Phoenix is kind of like your multi-tool, do absolutely everything watch. Uh, and then it's also going to have all those performance metrics we were talking about before, so your training readiness, training status, all of the routable courses, coaching, uh, and that is something I, I want to kind of drill into. So we have in Garmin Connect, which is the app, uh, the Garmin Coach plan, uh, which basically gives you some periodized training. There's, you can pick from like a 5K, 10K, half marathon. 
But if you wanted to do something else, you can actually put into the Garmin Connect calendar a race event of your choice, and the daily suggested workouts that pop up on your watch will actually train you towards that event. And so we're looking at all the data that you're providing us from the watch, putting that through our first speed algorithm, and then spitting it out into a workout that's gonna train you to become better towards your goal. So it's not just general fitness, it's actually periodized training towards a target, which is pretty cool. And, so, and is, that, is that all based on kind of an algorithm through the data? Is there an actual coaching, so, any, any kind of coaching in the background that, it's that probably, takes place? It's a little bit of a mix. Yeah. So uh, we do have some uh, you know, elite athletes that are also engineers in our headquarters. Um, so they have a lot of input, and then we have you know, a lot of historical information uh, from, from the first beat team in, in, uh, in Finland. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, for me, I have a coach, but I, I see it pop up all the time, and it, it pretty much closely aligns with what I'm looking to do, um, which has been great. So yeah. Uh, and that, and that, so on the coaching side, mm -hmm. when you're saying it spits out a workout, that'll give you a suggested Correct. intervals, yes. pace, yeah. all yeah. those things based on kind of where you're at in your fitness. Exactly, or how you woke up that day. Maybe you went out on a bender, got super drunk, <laughs> and your training readiness is like a two. Well, it's not gonna say, hey, we're gonna do you know, intervals. It's gonna say, maybe take the day off, or maybe let's do an easy run. So uh, that's where it really shines, is it's really taking all of the data from what you're doing in a day-to-day. -day. So how's your resting heart rate? How's your HRV? And then guiding you with those daily suggested workouts to do what's best for you at that time to make sure you stay training, not injured, because that's how you, you know, you don't make, you don't make progress in your training if you're constantly injured. And so how you can navigate that is, is you know, that's how you can find success. So. On the HRV piece, um, the way we measure HRV is a little bit different to what everyone else. So we... What, that, what are the people, when yeah. you say HRV, what yeah. are people hearing when they say that? So we're talking about heart rate variability. So it's the difference in time between each beat. So someone might say, yeah, I have a heart rate of you know, 40 beats a minute. Well, that's not even throughout that minute. It's different between each beat. And so the longer between each beat, generally, you should be fitter or in better, you know, better health. Uh, but it's really personal to you. And so the way we do it is we measure a three-week baseline where you wait, whilst you're sleeping, we're measuring every five minutes and taking an average and creating a personal baseline that's personalized towards you. And so what you'll see once that's populated on the watch is are you within that baseline tunnel based on what you're doing? So. I, whenever I travel for events, my HRV starts to tank because I don't sleep very well, I'm still trying to do all my training, and so it, it, you can really see on the graph, it's starting to get worse and you really can start to feel the stress on your body from you know, all the travel and things like that, and that's really something that it's, it's good at showing is the stress. Um, the other thing you could kind of mirror towards would be like the body battery feature with a lot of people really like, and I think it's like scary accurate sometimes, it's like, it really, I'm feel terrible and it says five, which is the, the bottom, which is the lowest it goes. Everyone's always like, is this, is it ever go to zero? But no, it goes to five. So, um, so yeah, so that's where that is. But yeah, those are the kind of the high level features there. Um, and then the, the big difference between the Phoenix line and the Epix line is the screen technology. So the Phoenix, it's gonna have better battery life because it's got that memory and pixel display, which really shines when you're outdoors. So the more sunlight that gets into the display, the brighter and easier it is to read. And then the Epics, they have an AMOLED display. So it's really vibrant and beautiful all the time. And AMOLED technology has gotten so good that our, uh, it's really easy to read even in direct sunlight and the battery is still exceptional. Um, so I think on, on this one, you're still getting 30 hours of GPS even with an AMOLED display. So yeah, so that's where that is. So, you know, as a, uh, bring it down to the everyday runner. I'm gonna bring it down to myself, right? So I, I'm a Garmin. Where I have okay. a, a 235, yep. a bit of an older watch. Sure. And still so works. I, and yeah, yeah it's a, exactly. So I'm saying, man, this thing still works. I see these, they look pretty awesome. Yep. Uh, why, why does someone upgrade from a Garmin product they may have that's, that works? What are they missing out on these features that they I wouldn't see for something I've had yeah. for about probably four years? Sure, yeah. So we've done a lot in terms of the, uh, the software features in the past four years between the 235 and the 265. So outside of just the screen improvements, I would say the big things that you're really missing out on are those training readiness, daily suggested workout towards a targeted race, and the HRV stuff. Our sleep tracking's also gotten a lot better, so it may not just be what you can see on the front, but also on the back. 
the heart rate sensors are getting better with each iteration. So, and I always say, like, the more accurate the product, the more information you can give it, then the better the experience is going to be. So I, I never take this thing off. Like, I wear it to sleep. I, I have lots of watches that you can probably imagine. And I, <laughs> even when I'm charging this one, I put another one on so Garmin Connect <laughs> doesn't have a break in the data. It's, so we need two watches. Yeah, That's a good exactly. point. Yeah. You know, yeah. The sleep so, watch and the... <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, in terms of a step up, just, just the screen alone would be a huge upgrade for re visibility, especially those morning runs. Um, but yeah, the, the training, advanced training features that you're going to get from moving into that, just training readiness alone, giving you that guidance each day. Because you get it. When you wake up, it has a morning report that kind of goes through like, here's how you slept, here's your training readiness, here's what you got on the calendar. And you can very quickly see, oh, I didn't sleep, that you know, body did not recover, and do I need to change what's going on in my training? So, especially for someone that maybe doesn't follow the daily series of workouts and does have a coach, that's a point of feedback that they can immediately provide to their coach to say, hey, you know, I didn't recover very well from yesterday, or what do we need to do to pivot? You know, so we're all about trying to, because we we are, we are for a lot of data, yeah. and it's a, it's it's obviously it's like a data dump, it's so much data. We're trying to basically make it easier for a customer to see and understand what it means. And I think that training readiness was one of those key features that really turned the corner there. And so, yeah, I would say just for that feature alone, it's worth the upgrade. So. Um, Harry showed me the 965. I got the sneak peek at the out and back course mapping. And, yes. and for someone, you know, if anyone out there travels a lot, that's, I was yeah. just on the road for Thanksgiving. Yep. I was in a place I wasn't familiar with, and I was trying to map out a course. Right. Right. Yeah. Where this, I mean, it literally, you just plug in the distance, what direction you want to go, and exactly. out and back, a loop, it, it spits it right back to you, turn yeah. by turn. So the benefit of having the built-in maps on the, on the wrist is that they are routable. So basically, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, because we have all those maps built in, when you go to start a run, you go to the navigation screen, you can scroll down, you can either start a course that you've saved on the watch or create a round trip course. It's going to ask you how far you want to go three miles, five miles, you can put 100 miles, whatever you want. And it will create three courses, which you can then immediately follow, and it gives you turn-by-turn -turn directions. It's, it's so handy. It's, it's super handy. I'm and, curious, like, assuming I'm updating my watch regularly, yep. um, you know, when I'm mapping myself in a car, it will tell me, oh, there's construction here, you right. gotta go around. How, how accurate is that? If I'm kind of blindly following, and it, how, how accurate are the maps if I'm so, in, a, in an unknown area, and it's, an area. Yeah. well, it, we 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 push out software updates quite regularly, and that doesn't improve include that does include improvements in the maps and stuff like that. So as long as you're keeping your watch up to date, then it should take into account you know new construction things like that. So you don't you know show up somewhere and there's no trail. Yeah. They said there was a trail. Yeah. So I would just make sure you keep your your watch up to date as much as you can. Either keep it. Um, you can go through Garmin Express on the, on the computer, or so, if you connect your watch to Wi-Fi, you can actually manually trigger the software update and like see and call it to come down. Um, but I just would say, just in general, for the health of the watch and, and, and making sure it's you know, up to date, the battery's good, just make sure it's up to date. So, yeah. Cool. cool. Well, awesome products that we got to see today. We appreciate you walking through this. No problem. I think I know what I'm asking for for Christmas. Yes. So, yeah. Harry, my wife's going to thank you for that. Yeah, I'm sure she will. So, it's great to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much.